So moving forward, we've got position and displacement vector. Now, what is the meaning of position and displacement vector? So let us resort to our regular graphing scheme of X and Y axis. So if this is my X axis and this is the Y axis, a point here would be designated by X comma Y. That means this is the position so many dis uh, so much distance away from the x-axis and so much distance away from the y-axis position of this particle p now the same analogy can be used in terms of position time graph or displacement time graph which is a very very useful tool in physics so let us look at displacement which is in terms of meters and time in terms of seconds. So, just like I have got x comma y, the position of this point P can be shown with respect to a position vector and a displacement vector. So, now comes the question, how do you show it in the form of a vector? So, what is it that we call, see, uh, in words we've seen what is a scalar, what is a vector, that is fine. But how do you actually represent a vector? It is very simple. We draw a straight line and we put a arrow. Now this is how you represent a vector. So if I take AB, the length that is there of AB will be the magnitude. So this makes it scalar. The moment you add a direction to it, it becomes a vector. So in order to estimate what is the position of this particular particle or position of this particular point P, what we will do is from the origin, we can draw a straight line with the arrow pointing towards P. And this would give us the position vector or the displacement vector. Now whichever we want. Diagram wise, this is fine. So, how do we represent a vector? A vector is represented by the capital letter of an English alphabet with an arrowhead on top of it. Always it has to be a capital letter and not a small letter. So, vectors are always drawn as a straight line with an arrowhead on one top. Now this arrowhead would point in the direction that we are talking about. Whereas the length of this arrowhead would give us the magnitude. So if you are talking magnitude separately, you have your scalar. If you are talking about magnitude and direction together, then you have your vector. Now overall understanding of this kind of vectors uh, we can actually look at the direction from a more traditional viewpoint, that is, the regular compass that is there. So I can have north, south, east and west. So you can tell how many degrees north of east, how many degrees north of west, how many degrees south, how many degrees south of east or south of west. Now, northwest, southeast, these are the only four directions that we have had in the beginning, but we can have four more, which we now call it as the northeast, the southeast, the southwest, and the northwest. So, in general, if you look at the uh, geography that is there, or if you look at the rain forecast, if there is a typhoon, if there is a cyclone, they tell northwest, southwest monsoon, northwest monsoon, and so on and so forth. So these are the regular directions. So with respect to the x-axis, at what degree or at what angle the vector is placed, that again gives us the direction in which it is heading. Now, since we are looking at the geometry of vectors, we can go ahead and classify vectors into many different types. So for instance, here I am just going to use two parallel lines or let me go ahead and make a few more. 
Now, these parallel lines that I have drawn here represent something very important. So, if I draw arrowheads like this and arrowheads like this, we end up getting at least two or three different sets of vectors. Now, in case one, if we see, both have the same length. That means the magnitude is the same. So, I can simply write it as same magnitude plus same direction. Now, this makes these two vectors equal vectors. Because both are in the same direction, both have the same length. Now, if we go ahead and have a look, we can even call these as parallel vectors. Why? They are parallel to each other and they are in the same direction. So, keeping that in mind, what would this set be called as? This set is called as anti-parallel. So, if I give this a name, you can see that I have got vector A, B and C, D. So, A, B vector, C, D vector. Now, when I write A at the beginning of this arrow, that means this is the origin and it terminates at the arrowhead where B is and the same thing for C. So, it starts at point C, the tail of the arrow, wherever the arrowhead is, it terminates, that is at point D. So, between A and B, the angle theta that we are going to measure is 180 degrees. That means, if AB is along the eastern direction, CD is along the western direction. So, therefore, we can easily tell that these are anti-parallel vectors. So we have parallel, anti-parallel. We have equal. So, we should also have unequal vectors. Now, how do we look at unequal vectors? For this, let us say I have two vectors of the same magnitude, but it is in a different direction. So, this is almost the same magnitude. So, if I label my vectors, let's say AB, CD, EF, I can tell that AB vector and CD vector are equal and at the same time AB vector and EF vector and AB vector or sorry CD vector AB we've already seen CD vector and EF vector are unequal so, a vector qualifies to be equal if both the direction and magnitude are the same. If they are different, then these are called as unequal vectors. Now, going back to the previous example, which I will uh, redraw it here, we have had two vectors, right? So, we drew it like this as anti-parallel. Now, instead of naming the entire thing, I will name this as A and I will call this as minus A. Now, how do I you know, justify this classification? If I take a number line, which is a regular number line that you would have done in your school, you have got x-axis, minus x, you've got y-axis and minus y. I'll explain the concept for the x-axis and the same is applicable even for the y-axis. So, if I take this a vector and if I am placing it like this, that is along the positive x-axis, then my negative a is pointing in the negative x-axis. It has the same magnitude. So, for instance, this is let's say 6 centimeter. This is also 6 cm. That means magnitude of vector A. So, I have the symbol capital letter with an arrowhead on top. 
is 6 cm but the direction for one is positive the other is opposite it is negative so if i want to do any mathematical operation such as addition subtraction and if i know that the vectors are anti parallel with respect to each other i can go ahead and do it and this is how we have seen displacement so assume a body starts from origin goes 6 cm along the eastern direction so i'll just write it here 6 cm east then takes a u turn and comes 12 cm west again takes 6 cm as a u turn and comes back east where is the person the person is at the origin so when you are having east west east what we will do is east if you are taking it as along the positive x axis it is going to be plus 6 cm west from 6 to 0 is positive so from 0 he has moved another 6 cm along the negative x axis so we get a total of plus 12 cm just looking at the magnitude or we can take it as minus 12 only magnitude the direction is opposite and then again 6 cm towards the x axis therefore the total displacement is going to be 0 cm for a body that is following these directions that are given along with the specified magnitude so this is the basic of the different types of vectors that are there now we can also have multiplication of vectors geometrically now how do we multiply a vector let us assume that this vector that i have drawn here is let's say 3 cm so if i multiply 2 into this i am supposed to get a vector of length 6 cm exactly double of this so if i take vector p and vector q i can tell that p vector is equal to q vector by 2 or q vector is equal to 2 times p vector so this is scalar multiplication something that we saw in the differences where you multiply a scalar to a given vector now since here we have not specified the vector using math but rather using geometry we will not go into the details of it but as the chapter proceeds we will actually come back to this point of scalar product and vector product one more important thing to understand is not always will you get arrowheads on top in your printed material so if you look at your textbook they would have written a as a vector bold so let's say if i'm just writing here if i write my vector to be a vector in your textbook it would have been written in bold face so when they're printing it they can print it in bold face and this means a vector when we write it we can't write it in bold face so that is why we put a arrowhead on top so this covers the basics of vectors that are there now let us see if you want to add vectors how are we going to do it so when we are looking at addition of vectors we can simply go ahead and write them alphabetically like this so if i have two vectors a and b i can simply write the resultant vector r as nothing but a vector plus b vector now we had seen something called as position vector a little earlier in the chapter how does the position vector come about so once we get that then this becomes a little easy so we had seen a point p here and we took the vector from the origin to point p and we called this as our position vector so small r here generally represents position vector and the representation of this position vector is very useful because based on this we will be able to do a lot of mathematical operations that are there especially when you are looking at addition subtraction let's say multiplication division division of vectors is generally unheard of because we cannot divide magnitude and direction with magnitude and direction 
but multiplication is the most used of all these vectors that are there. So, if I'm going to write resultant vector as a vector plus b vector here, how does it look geometrically? So, for that, let us take a couple of vectors. So, assume that the red is my a vector and the green is my b vector. So, this is a vector. So, I've got a direction. This is b vector. Now, if we have to add these kind of vectors, the first thing that we do is we do a little bit of rearrangement of the vectors. That is, we redraw them such that the tail of the second vector is coinciding with the tail of the first vector. So, in this case, what I will do is we'll go ahead and place the second vector, the tail of B, at the end of A. Not at the tail of A. Now, this is a common mistake that is done. We place it at the head of A. So, this is going to be my B vector. Now, the resultant that is there will be an arrow that is joining A and B. Now, the direction of this is something that we will have to discuss about.